Hi, and happy Monday. My name's Angelica Lamas Baker, and you've stumbled on to my podcast, The Rare Queen Out of the Blue. Hey, again, this is Angelica Lamas Baker. I hope y'all are having a great Monday. Um, this is The Rare Queen Out of the Blue. And so my topic today is goals. Um, you set them, you probably fail, try again probably fail again, but maybe reach them. Who knows? As you know, my goal is to drop a new episode every Monday, except for last Monday, I didn't get an episode drop. And I guess that kind of speaks to this topic. I had a lot of things going on. Saturday, I had to uh, speak a sermon at, at Our Lady's Ministry at church. So I had to prepare that. I had a couple other things I needed to get out and done. And then I was sick. Like I have a sinus infection, so I wasn't feeling well. Um, I wasn't able to hold anything down and I had like this tremendous headache. I didn't get around to it. I don't really pre-record these. I record these on Monday and Monday was Labor Day and my husband was home. I wasn't feeling well and there was just a lot of noise at my house because he decided he wanted to do some fall cleaning, all that sort of stuff. So I just, I was not able to record. We also have uh, my three-year-old grandson is potty training and my office is right next to the bathroom so I don't know if you listened to last episode you can kind of hear a faint little knock 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 because they're teaching him to knock on the bathroom door before he goes in <laughs> and then he needed to knock on my door and announce that he had gone potty it's a little difficult to record at my house right now we also have a newborn grandson at the house so I am actually kind of on location at my mom's in her bedroom recording right now and working towards my goals so that's the deal is goals like everybody has them, everybody wants to achieve them, but then again, you don't reach them and you feel like you're a failure. And the thing is, you're not. Number one, failure is meant to be learned by. So failure is not really failure, it's just a trial and error situation. I tried time and time again with my PKU to get it under control and it didn't work. Like everything didn't work, it, nothing worked, nothing worked. Even when I got onto um, my pal and Zeke, it didn't work right away. And I, that's just trial and error. We had to figure out that sweet spot. What were we doing wrong? Um, obviously, I had some side effect allergic reactions. And so that was kind of disheartening. Again, goals are, are kind of hard to achieve. So we're here to talk about those today. I was trying to talk my mom into coming in and talking about this because, you know, goals. My mom um, always kind of wanted to go to nursing school and do some things and she put all that aside um, to raise us kids. Then she ended up in a position where she had lost her job as a pharmacist technician and that prompted her to go back to school. She decided she wanted to start her new chapter because she had this goal. And what do you do with your next chapter now that your kids are grown up? And she remembered back, I always wanted to finish, I wanted to go to college, I wanted to finish, I wanted to be a nurse. And so at the age of 50, my mom became a nurse. That was one of her goals. We have to remember that delayed does not mean denied. And also, the path to the goal may not necessarily be the path that we have originally set forth to reach that goal. I am a fan of rabbit trails and taking the road less traveled. So, you know, after I got healthy again and things like that, I, I was working um, a full-time job. And then my advocacy started kind of picking up and it was, I was gone more than I was there. And I had known at the time that it was only a quote unquote temporary situation. Their daughter had, it was a family business. Their daughter had been their secretary. She had a baby and that baby ended up having some special needs. And so she needed to be home until he was about ready to go to school. And it was getting to that point. Um, he was getting ready to go to preschool and all that sort of stuff. And so she was ready to jump back into the working force. So my life kind of took a weird little right turn. I always knew that I wanted to be writing. I always knew that I wanted to be helping people and doing different things. And um, I was kind of doing that as a quote unquote side hustle while I was working being in a position where I was, it sort of put me into a place where I needed to dedicate my life to take care of myself. And so my dean and I sat down and talked about it. And he's like, well, I would much rather see you kind of traveling and being happy and advocating and writing and doing these things and trying to make that work because that's your bliss. That's your ultimate goal in life is to kind of go back to school 
I would like to get a degree in um, anthropology with the study of special needs as a society. I would like to do so many. Th- I have aspirational goals. I'd like to do so many of these things. My husband was like, you can't do those and work full time at the same time. We are very blessed that he basically kind of works for himself and works with um, a very close friend of his that if he needs time off to help me or whatever, no questions asked, he gets the time. But he also can kind of make his own schedule. He makes enough to keep us afloat. We're not wealthy by any means, but we don't want for anything. We were in a position where we inherited the home we live in. So we didn't have the thought of a house payment and things bogging us down. And so that's where we were in the position. I think it's almost been two years ago, February, that I just stopped working. Their daughter was ready to come back and I was ready to dive feet first into what I'm doing. Has it been an easy road? No. Um, Hits and misses, all sorts of stuff. So that's what we're here. We're here to talk about goals. I mentioned aspirational goals. You know, there are basically two types of goals. There's your smart goals and your aspirational goals. Aspirational goals are those things that like, if I could do anything with my life, what would those goals be? Like I said, I would like to go back to school and finish up my degree, and I would like to study special needs as a society. I would like anthropology. I do have a minor in sociology. I would also like to get my background in public administration finished um, to help with my advocacy in when I go to the Senate and go to places like that, because part of that is knowing how the creation of bills work and politics and all that sort of stuff. So I would I would like that's like my ultimate aspirational goal to tell you the truth right now is to finish that. My next aspirational goal would be obviously a world cruise or what they call um, a repositioning cruise, which is basically they take the cruise ship and it's, you know, it seasons, they shift them. And so sometimes they're up in New York where they dock at or port out of and they move them down to Florida or around California because it's warmer there in the winter than it is in New York. So around the winter months, they go all the way around and through the Panama Canal and all that. Definitely, definitely um, an aspirational goal for myself and my friend Terry. Another aspirational goal is I would like to take my mom on an Alaskan cruise. We were kind of planning one and everything kind of fell apart and we didn't get a chance to do it. So we, I would like to do that. Aspirational goals are just those that just kind of inspire you. It doesn't mean that they're unachievable or unattainable. They're just ones that are probably not in the immediate future. And the way that we get to those is through the SMART goals, which SMART is an acronym. Um, It means specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. Those are your SMART goals. Those are the goals that you see in everyday life that are the goals that are achievable. They're specific. They're specific to you. They're specific to what the goal is. They are very bullet-pointed, this is what I want. They're not kind of shapeable as it goes. The more you narrow your goals down, the more they're achievable. Like those aspirational goals that are like, I can't attain those in this minute simple amount of time, but I can way down the road, how you attain those aspirational goals. Again, it's creating the SMART goals, breaking them down and narrowing it down to steps up to that aspirational goal. If I want to go back to school, what do I do need? What goals do I need to hit now in order to achieve it? Those SMART goals are those goals that you can hit in a day, in a week, in two weeks. Because that boils down to the T, which is time-based. You want to set a time, a deadline. When am I going to achieve this goal? I want to achieve this goal by X. Now, is that date always met? No. As an empowerment and mindset coach, um, a life coach, are those goals always met on your time that you meant for them to be reached? No. Like this podcast, again, I'm trying to get to a point where I drop an episode every Monday. That's my goal. Did I make that goal last week? No. Does that mean that I'm a failure? No. 
It means that I need to pick myself up, jot down the pros and cons of trying to get this done. What is preventing me from doing that in my life? Why am I not getting it done? Is it someone? Am I not motivated? Is it that the environment that I'm in isn't conducive to that? What are the reasons? One of the reasons that I boiled down to was sometimes in my house, because we do have a toddler, we have a newborn, there are multiple people living in my home, two dogs. Sometimes the noise factor for recording is just not conducive to what I was trying to do. So, of course, my mom said, well, why don't you just come record at my house? So that's what I'm doing. I'm recording here until Dean and I can figure out a better situation for our office, maybe figure out a way to kind of deafen some sound a little. Or I learned how to use this neat little mixing board that he helped me get to learn how to reduce noise more. So <laughs> there you go. I had to sit there and examine. Now, I was sick. That was on top of everything else. I had a sinus infection. And the only way to fix that was... I went to the doctor, I got some antibiotics, you know, within 24, 48 hours, I was feeling a hundred times better. I, you know, so far that was listening to my body. I know I have other issues and conditions and I need to listen to my body and self-care. So again, delay does not mean deny. Your goals need to be measurable. That's what the M means, measurable. What kind of evidence is there that you're making progress towards your aspirational goal or your specific smart goal how are you marking off the progress i am a big fan of progress not perfection if you follow my instagram uh, my facebook page you see that hashtag all the time progress not perfection life is all about progress and the only way to know if you're getting closer to your goal is some way to measure that progress like my mom said, well, maybe you need to do like they do, like they film Jeopardy, they record three, four episodes in a shot. Why don't you sit there and do that, record three or four episodes at once, and then schedule them to drop, which is what I'm trying to do. But it's kind of hard to sit here by myself and just talk. <laughs> um, so I'm also kind of here with mom at mom's in the hopes that mom's going to kind of peek in here shortly and maybe do an episode or two with me just so I have somebody to talk with so it's not just me kind of rambling so you need to be measurable um this podcast what are my goals for this podcast I and mean, that's another goal i don't know i mean mom keeps asking me like can you make money with a podcast can you i know of some podcast hosts that do make money with their podcast there's ads there's uh patreon pages you know crowd basically crowdsource or funding um you can't is that a goal with this podcast I don't know. I know that one of my goals in life was to become a speaker at rare disease or PKU conventions or just conventions in general, or at least get some sort of speaking gigs. And I had, well, Ariel, who I've spoken about, the dream queen up in Chicago, said to me, you know, if they won't give you a platform, maybe you need to create your own. And I was listening to different podcasts. And different things. And I'm like, I think I could do that. Do I think I could do it at the level they do? No. But at least it gets me some practice talking and getting my ideas out there. And maybe some people listen and maybe it will help them. Um, so there you go. That's sort of how this sort of got birthed was, okay, if, if I can't get a platform and nobody will give me the opportunity, create your own opportunity. So how are my progress towards my goals here? Like my second episode had over 20 downloads, which was kind of nice. Like to go from like eight to 20, like it's double digits. That's way more than I ever thought. And I've also noticed that it's not just the United States. I've got some listeners, um, some people listened in the UK, in New Zealand. I think the first episode I had somebody in Bulgaria. So let's, that's interesting. That's That was never a goal I, I struck for, but it's definitely how I measure my progress with this is kind of checking out those little stats and algorithms and things like that. So you need to have some way of measuring your, the distance traveled. Your goals need to be achievable. Again, you have your aspirational goals that are like, 
the mountaintop, that's your Everest, that's your Kilimanjaro. That's, like, if everything went right and the cards that I'm dealt, that's the goal. That's, that's the golden ticket. But life is life. And so there are some goals that you need to set that are achievable. Now, for us rare patients or chronic illness patients, patient, people that, deli- that excuse me, live with depression and anxiety and different things, those achievable goals can be as simple as getting out of bed, brushing your teeth, taking a shower and getting dressed and maybe making your bed. Now, to most of the able-bodied people and to people who don't struggle with these things every day, this may seem like a silly little goal, but some days it's all that you can do. And if you reach that goal, it makes you feel fulfilled. Like I was able to do it and it makes you feel better that you were able to achieve at least getting yourself up taking a shower, feeling refreshed, changing your clothes, and making your bed. You know, they've got to be achievable. Some days, that is my goal. I want to get out of bed, take a shower, brush my teeth, get dressed. If I can do that, I'm going to call that a win for the day. If I can manage to cook dinner for my entire family or for Dean, I'm going to call that a win for the day because sometimes the pain is just so hard. I'm dealing with still with my lower back, um, my lower lumbar region. I had a radio frequency done and it was supposed to basically deaden those nerves and take away the pain, except for we're like three months down the chute and the pain is back. So I'm going to have to go have it redone. That's, that's uh, interesting <laughs> to say the least. It wasn't something that I was planning on. But because of that back pain, it makes it a little bit hard for me to stand up at the sink and do the dishes or stand for a long period of time, walk around. So again, those days where I can just get myself out of bed, take a shower, get dressed, feed the dogs, play with the dogs. That's a win right now. The goals have to be achievable. You don't want to make every goal in your life just so monumental that you don't feel like you're ever, ever going to get it. And again, those aspirational goals are achieved by making achievable goals, by making smart goals to reach yourself to that level. They need to be relevant. They need to be relevant to you, okay? that That's the key to you. They don't need to be relevant to your parents. They don't need to be relevant to your friends. You know, your friends can think it's the stupidest idea ever, or that, you know, whatever, and your family can make fun of it, and whatever, that's, like, my mom always tells me, we have a lot of opportunity to talk while we drive, and my mom came up, like, I don't know why we can't put the mic in the car and just drive around like it's karaoke, like car karaoke, and just record these podcasts, because that's when we have our greatest conversations, is typically when we're on the road, or we're in a hotel room, and stuff like that, um, (laughs) And she talks about how I had this idea way back when I was younger that in order to make money, I would run errands for people. I'd stand in line for them. Like, they want to go to a concert, but they got to work, and they can't stand on line. I'd stand on line for them. And everybody told me it was nuts. It was stupid. Nobody's going to pay for somebody to go stand in line. Guess what? It's 2020. There's apps for that. And she's like, I could kick myself. My husband always has some latest, greatest thing that he's fabricating in his head. Well, why don't you do this? And they could do that to the device or do this. And then, a, you know, a few months later, he sees something or a year later, he sees something very similar to uh, what he saw. And there you go. I mean, like when we used to ride the motorcycle, my husband took some old LED car LED and started lighting up his motorcycle and this was back in the early 2000s lighting up the motor lighting up everything um, when we went to car sh- when we went to bike shows and he set it up for display it was lit up and it would reflect off of everything because he had it so shined and everybody's like that's so cool that's so cool you should like make a pack and market that in like install it for people and you could be he said like, no nobody's gonna pay for that like you could just it's so simple you could just slap the lights up under there well here's the deal Dean. Uh, you're a mechanic, 
you're an electrician, you know how to do all this, the everyday average person doesn't know how to do this, because what you see rolling down the road, heading to Sturges, or just every night now when you go to dinner, you see a motorcycle with all that underglow, because <laughs> it's popular now, you know, so it has to be relevant to you, you can't listen to other people's ideas, Dean listened to those voices in his head that said, you can't do that, that's stupid, see, those are voices that are external that are telling you that you're nuts, it's kind of like this podcast, I have friends that say, nobody's going to listen to it, why are you doing this, why are you wasting your time, this is just stupid, you know, I don't care, it's keeping me busy, it's one of those achievable goals that I can set, like, I know this day I need to record and edit and get it ready to drop, it's something that I can do because right now during the situation in the world with COVID and the quarantines and everything, I'm not able to travel and do the things that I would really love goal-wise to be doing, which is advocating, driving to see people. I would love to do a book tour, all that sort of stuff. And right now that's just not an quote unquote achievable goal currently. Are some of those things in the works? Yes. But this is relevant to what I can do right now, and I can reach the masses right now. And then they're like, well, nobody wants to sit there and listen to you talk. Yeah, I know, but I also don't want to sit in front of a camera because I have problems with the way my image, the way that I perceive myself and looking at a camera and having to watch myself. So I have a problem with subjecting other people to looking at me. I don't want to sit there in front of a camera. It's hard, especially when you're by yourself. I'm not going to sit here and vlog when I don't want to look at myself in a mirror. I talked about this at the ladies ministry this weekend. You know, I had them do an icebreaker game and we talked about one of our fears. And I said, mirrors. And everybody looked at me like, well, huh? I'm like, listen, when you battle with depression and all that sort of stuff, there's, there's a part of depression where it says that when you look, you know, you're depressed and you know, you have, it's basically kind of like body dysmorphia is kind of what it is. Like you look in the mirror and you look you think that you're trapped in somebody else's body. It's not you looking back. You think it's like an alien's taking over your body or something. Like, that's what it is. And that's what mirrors are to me. And it cracks me up and it cracks everybody up because Dean has mirrors all over our house. Our bedroom literally has a wall of mirrors. And he's been that way since we've been married because he's very determined. You're going to look at yourself at some point. I like you. I like the way you look. You should like the way you look. That's his little therapy. <laughs> um, and so they asked, how does that work? I'm like, I try to avoid the mirrors. <laughs> um, it doesn't always work. I am better about it, but definitely still a fear. I mean, you got to make these things relevant to you. It doesn't matter what all the haters say, because haters going to hate. You know, um, I have a friend, and I am super excited. My lion sister, um, my soror, Clifford Mack, in, uh, in San Antonio, is going to start a podcast here shortly. Like, she's getting ready to drop the launch date. And it's going to be called Peeling Off the Layers Podcast. I don't know where it's going to be available. I'm super excited to hear it. It's relevant to her. Like, she had all these voices telling her, don't do it. She was scared to do it. And then I dropped my podcast all of a sudden and did it. And she's like, you know, you inspired me. I'm not going to lie. Like, I always wanted to do something like this. And I wanted to, but I was scared. Like, people told me, some people told me no. Um, voices in my head said, no, it's silly, it's stupid, I can't do this, but this is relevant to me, this is my goal, this is what I want to do. I've got other line sisters and friends telling me, I want to I want to drop a book, I want to write a book, and other people are like, why? Like, what, why would you do that? I'm like, why can't you? It's relevant to you. It doesn't need to be relevant to anybody else, because here's the deal, when you set a goal that's relevant to you and means something to you, not to your husband, not to your parents, not to your friends, you're more likely to go towards head first towards that goal. That's the truth. It's kind of like when I got back on my PKU treatment and my diet, like everybody's like, well, how come your husband doesn't go to your appointments with you? How come this? How come that? How come you, you know what? Here's the deal. It's kind of like an addict going, taking that first step into AA into NA, into whatever, I got to want it for me. It's got to be relevant to me. If it's not relevant to me and I'm not doing it for me, it's not going to stick. 
just like your goals. If your goal is not relevant to you. If you're going to college to make your parents happy and it's not making you happy and you're not achieving what you want out of life, you're not going to do it. My brother took a somewhat seemingly U-turn um, at the age of 40 and decided he wanted to be a paramedic. Literally, did everybody know that was always a goal in his life. Like, he originally, when he started off the path with my mom in college, it was to become a paramedic. It was to do what he is doing now. They, he got married and they had kids. And his next goal was to make sure that they had everything they needed and wanted in life. Because we grew up with very little sometimes. And is this more important or is that more important? Or what bill do you pay and how to make ends meet, especially when your sibling has special needs? And, and I've talked about this, I think, in my first podcast and my last episode that, you know, my brother probably won't hear him on a podcast. I don't know. But it's hard to go over the special needs sibling because... Some of your goals are kind of pushed to the side. Some of your achievements are pushed to the side because you feel like the focus is on them. And so that was one of his focuses. Like, I want, this is what I want to do. But then he started having kids and realizing that this is how I grew up. I don't want my kids like that. So he took a U-turn there and a bunny trail and got a degree in um, mechanical engineering and different stuff and had a career. And saved and did what he needed to do as a responsible parent. And once he knew he had a foothold on, he knew he was unhappy because he wasn't doing his bliss, what was relevant to him, his goal, which was to be a paramedic and to serve and to be there for people. So he took a U-turn, which is what every kind of people thought. Like even Dean, my husband was like, I at 40, why would you like do you're giving up X, Y, Z for this. But that was always his goal. It was relevant to him. And he did it. And that's what he does. And we couldn't be more prouder of him. Because your goals have to be relevant to you. Does it mean that it's easy? No. Because, like I told the ladies, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in the path that God has set for you, does he make it easy? No. Not necessarily easy. That's usually when all the other little things fly at you from the sides and push back at you. And that's what happens. And so you got to do. My goal was to drop an episode every mo Monday. And guess what? That didn't work. Everything started shooting at me from the other sides. Like I got super excited. I dropped two episodes, got super excited. Then third episode comes and everything's shooting at me and pushing back and pushing back. And I could have quit, and my mom's like, no, no. Like, this is a thing. Like, your aunts are listening. I listen. I don't know if your dad listens, but your friends are listening. So do it. Keep doing it. Stop letting things get in your way. It's got to be time-based. You know, your goal's got to have a time. Like, you got to have a deadline. If you don't have a deadline, you think you're going to have all the time in the world. Everybody would like to think you have all the time in the world, but tomorrow's not promised. You only have today. That's a guarantee. Today is a guarantee because today's happening. You're here and it's happening. So it's guaranteed. Yesterday's gone, but tomorrow's not promised. And you've got to set a time frame. My time frame is every Monday I'm going to drop an episode. My goal is to keep this podcast going for a year. That's, that's, that's my achievable, attainable goal right now for this podcast. Where it's going to go from there, I don't know. Where it's going to go during that year, I don't know. I'm open to possibilities, but these are my time-based goals. Time-based goal, again, I want to travel is one of my ultimate goals. Yes, I want to do repositioning cruise. I want to go to Alaska. Um, one of my goals was to go to Bermuda. Um, I was telling my line sisters um, after we crossed over with Theta that I had this dream. I was standing on a Pink Sand Beach, which pink, and that's what they refer to it as, crossing the pink sands. And to me, that was, oh, you're going to go on a Bermuda cruise. Like, Bermuda has pink sands. You're going to go on this cruise. What a great idea. And then everything happened to prevent me from going to this, on this cruise that I booked. And I'm like, maybe that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe that's not what that dream meant. 
I had already looked at data, had tried it, tried once, and was like, no, I'm not going to be able to, I don't have the time to dedicate to it. So I made doing theta and being able to cross over one of my goals. I've sort of achieved that. I'm in my probationary period right now. So I've achieved that. I've, I've crossed over, not quite a bit official yet. I'm a neophyte, but we're getting there. But now one of my goals is one of them said, well, are you still going to go to Bermuda? Yeah. You know what? That's my goal. Like one of my toys is Bermuda. June or July 2020, I'm going to Bermuda. That's my deadline. Now, I also have sitting down this last month or since I announced, well, before I announced what I wanted to do was goals because I am my life coach and this is, you got to practice what you preach. I started creating a digital vision board. And so for the last couple of weeks, everybody's been kind of seeing pop up on my cover, on my private Facebook page, a new cover, a picture, and it says 2021 goals, 2021 goals. So my first one was the Pink Sands of Bermuda, and it said 2021 goals. My next one was this last Saturday when we were doing the women's ministry. I was preaching about pray for fire and goal. One of our things is what was a dream in your life? What's one thing is aspirational? If you would have one dream that you have is aspirational. If you could do anything, what would it be? And or what did you want to be when you were growing up? And of course, one lady says a cosmetologist. And she's like, but I became a mom and I had kids and it's just not the cards. And I'm like, why is it not in the cards? I don't understand. Do it. <laughs> you know, a few other people said different things. And one of my dreams was to have a book tour. By the end of 2020, I will have seven books that I have been a part of um, in the She is the Ish series will be dropped. And that will be the end of that series, which has been a pivotal point for me for my writing because I started writing again. That was one of my dreams Growing up is I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be an author. And then I had voices tell me no one wants to listen to it. No one wants to read your fiction. Nobody cares. It's stupid. You can't make money that way. Well, I listened to those voices. I stopped writing. I got depressed. And things prevented. And then the opportunity for She is the Issue presented itself with Ariel. And I made it one of my goals to be in every one of those books. And because I've been in all six of those, Ariel is blessing me with my own she is the ish book, which will have all of my chapters in it. So if people wanted to just read my chapters because they are relevant to chronic illness and rare disease and my own personal journey, it kind of as a little snippet of that. You could, you'll be able to purchase that here in the next few months. But my goal is to write a book, go on a book tour, and also now that I have seven go on a book tour and everybody's like, well, why can't you do that? I'm like, well, COVID is, and they're like, why? I don't understand. Like, do it. <laughs> so that is one of my 2021 goals is a book tour. I would, I very much want to do a book tour. I'm so excited to do a book tour. Um, so that's one of my new 2021 goals. What my next 2021 goal I'm going to announce, I don't know. I know uh, my dean and I would like to get a house with some property because he'd like to have a workshop. Does he need a workshop? No. Does he need a large garage? No, but we're kind of in a place of sometimes you kind of want things and they'd be nice and make life easier. But I like maybe like a she shed I can record in or a place I can record in where there isn't all this noise and I can work and write and do things that would be nice. So I don't know. Maybe that's one of our goals for 2021. I haven't decided what my third one is yet, but I, I think I'm just going to sit down and come up with my 2021 goals. And I encourage you to. I know that everybody thinks it's hokey, especially guys. Like, vision board. Like, I have friends that make fun of vision board. That's just stupid. But no, it's not. It really is helpful. It's helpful because if you actually create a scrapbook vision board, cut out pictures, print out pictures, mount them up on a bulletin board, take them down as you achieve them, or put a star on them, it's visual. It's measurable. You are measuring and reaching your goals. If you even take those goals that even seem not that large and you break them down into smaller goals that are even smaller to work up to those bigger goals, you'll notice that it's happening. It is so you can see that you're achieving those goals. That these are what I wanted to do in my, this is what I wanted to do in my life. This is what I wanted to do this year. This is what I want to do next week. This is what I want. 
and you see yourself start taking those things off, how you start feeling better about yourself, even if it is getting up and getting dressed. I make a to-do list every day. And sometimes that to-do list lists get up, take a shower, eat breakfast, make sure you eat at least three meals a day. Right now, the goal is to try to get to 100 grams of protein a day. That is on my to-do list, 100 grams of protein. Do your shot 100 grams of protein because I am basically force feeding myself right now. My mom is having to force feed me. My friends are, my mom was like, never in my life was I ever going to think I was going to be in a position to tell you, you need to get more protein in your diet because it was making you sick. If one thing is off in your body, it throws your whole body and your whole equilibrium off, to, for lack of a better word. It throws off your whole linear part of your body off, everything about you off. If one little thing is not fitting, and the thing that's not fitting right now is I am not consuming enough protein. So one of my goals every day, 100 grams of protein, do I reach it? More often than not, no. <laughs> I am not reaching it, and it is making me sick. So what do we do? We backed off my medication to the 20 grams, but we're still hitting 100 grams of protein. So it's hard. And let me tell you this, but if you make it measurable and you take it off, so what do I do every day? I do the food logs. Like if you're a PKU person, parent, or patient, you know that there are food logs, and you write them down as a kid, and I had this much, and I had this much, and... I'm doing that now and I'm ticking off. And once I hit, get to like 80 or 90, I'm like, you know what? I'm so close. I'm going to make it. So it needs to be measurable. It needs to, goals are important. It's not just pseudoscience. It's not just, you know, <clears throat> a fad. Goals are important. And goals have to be relevant. They don't have to be relevant to anybody but you. And so that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. It's okay if you don't always meet that goal. The Beatles, rejected by Decca Recording, who said, we don't like their sound. They have no future in the show business. Albert Einstein, he wasn't able to speak until he was almost four years old and his teacher said he would never amount to much. Walt Disney, fired from a newspaper for looking, for lacking imagination and having no original ideas. If you've never failed, you've never tried anything new. And that's true. If you've never failed, you've never thought outside the box and you've never taken a leap. My challenge to you is to sit down and at least come out with like five goals. And make them, some of them are smart goals, some of them make them attainable, but some of them make them aspirational. Make them, if I could do anything in the world, anything in life, what would I do? And then try to find me if you want to and tell me what they are. And I would love to hear them. I would love to hear your progress. If you're making those goals, I would love to. You can find me. You can find me on Instagram at Angie Out of the Blue. You can find me on Facebook at Angie Out of the Blue, on Twitter at Rare Queen Angel. Find me and tell me about your goals. Tell me if you're achieving them. Ask me about mine. Ask me if I'm doing these things, if I'm doing these things that I've said, because right now my number one goals are this podcast for a year. Do I know if anybody's going to be listening or getting anything out of it? No, but you know what? I'm doing this for me because it's relevant. And if I'm helping one person, I'm achieving my goal at this point. So one year of this, Bermuda 2021, Book Tour 2021, um, I know Dean and I, one of our aspirational goals is to purchase a home with some property, um, Alaska, and that's five. That's five right now. That's five goals. And, of course, going back to school. Those are my goals. Those are my six goals right now. Ask me how I'm going with these goals. Ask me if I'm reaching them. Hold me accountable for these goals. If if I tell you I'm not reaching these goals, why am I not reaching them? Now, I, I will probably check in every once in a while on the podcast and let you know what's going on. Obviously, if I'm going to go on tour, book tour, I'll let you guys know 
Um, if I'm gonna be on vacation, I'll let you know because I will probably take all this bizarre equipment with me and probably record I am that kind of person. So I'm super excited. I really hope you guys have a great week. This is Angie out of the blue and I'll talk to you soon.